Hey guys, so for this video, I want to talk about how to improve your aim in Chapter 2 Season 4. The last time I made an aim training video was about 2 months ago, but that solely focused on aiming with the charged shotgun. That was also when Epic still chose not to put the charge in creative by the way. Why did they do that? Anyways, due to the huge change in the loot pool, it only makes sense to make an updated aim guide for shotguns, ARs, and SMGs. Basically what I'll do is break down the 2 major forms of aim there are to work on, show off an insane new map to train in, and finish off with some general tips and tricks. This is one of the most important videos I've made in a while, so I highly recommend you watch until the end. If you don't, at least watch until the aim map because I promise you right now, you have never seen anything like it in your life. Thus, without further ado, let's get right on into it. Like I just said, I'm going to start by briefly explaining the ins and outs of aim theory. Aim theory is essentially the science behind aiming in game. According to my boy Karyu in the God Aimers at Sparky GG, there are two main concepts behind aim theory, tracking aim and click timing aim. These two aspects make up your mouse or cursor control, which is extremely important for becoming a better aimer. Let's begin with tracking. Tracking, as I'm sure you all know, is when you have your crosshair on your opponent and you want to keep it on them. No matter what they do or where they go, you're going to do your best to track them along the way. Due to the innate nature of tracking, one of the best and simplest tips I have is to make sure you're both predicting and reacting to your opponent's movements. If you look at any top Fortnite aimer, guys like Mongrel or any contender league controller player, they're able to perfectly track their opponents as they jump, swim, glide, or bounce. This is not only because they practice their aim a lot, but it's also because they're taking advantage of what their opponents are doing. Like, if someone is shockwaving through the air, you know for a fact where they're gonna land, when they're gonna land, as well as how they're gonna get there. Be smart and capitalize on it. This the same exact thing applies to when you see an enemy jump up or start gliding. They can't just randomly strafe to the right or left. They're stuck in the air for however long that situation calls for, giving you a beautiful opportunity to track them to the spot they land. Then, the other quick tip I have for tracking is to keep your crosshair both smooth and consistent. The absolute worst thing you can do while tracking is start randomly flicking or putting your crosshair all over the place. Tracking your opponent accurately is hard enough as is. Most good players will start strafing side to side, crouch spamming up and down, and jumping like a little bunny rabbit. There's no need to make your life any harder by having finicky tracking aim. Take my advice and track smoothly. Moving on to the other concept of aim theory, we have click timing. Click timing refers to when you move your crosshair onto your target, and then time when to click your mouse or bumper to shoot. Think of a shotgun for example. You move your crosshair from wherever it was before, onto your opponent, wait to line up the shot, and click. Pretty simple, right? Well, not exactly. You need to be aware that this is not the same thing as flicking. I know I've kind of used those terms interchangeably in the past, but I want to make it clear, click timing and flicking are not the same things. Flicking is when you very rapidly move your crosshair onto the target. It is just a very small component of click timing. It is not the whole thing. Anyways, my biggest tip for improving your click timing is to not rush your shots. Way too many people think they need to shoot as soon as they put their crosshair onto their opponent. Guess what? You do not. In fact, most of the time, it's better to wait and to make sure your shot is going to hit for good damage than it is to rush yourself and get off a wimpy shot first. You see how in this clip from Benji Fishy, he waits to bring his crosshair higher up before he shoots his second pump shot? That's because he knew he needed to make it count, and while he easily could have gone for a quick body shot, he chose to wait a little longer for a more accurate, higher damage shot. 90 damage by the way. Great example, Jarian. Seriously though, the final tip I have for your click timing relates to flicks. As Karyu pointed out in his aim guide, go check his video out after mine, you should not be training your flicks. Why? They're simply way too inconsistent. The only two scenarios you should flick are when your opponent comes out of nowhere and you have to capitalize on the small window you have to do damage, or you're switching from one target to another extremely quickly. Both of those cases are pretty rare, so please listen to Papa Jarian and stop practicing your flicks. Work on your general click timing instead. Next up, let's dive into the new aim training map that will change your lives forever. The official name of it is the 1v1 aim duel map version 2 by Raider464 and Aimer7. I'll put the code for it up on your screen right now as well as in the description. After you load it up, it looks like any normal aim duel map. You have 3 different health settings, a bunch of season 4 weapons, as well as something like 10 different aim duel scenarios to practice your close and mid range aim. When you turn around from that section though, you have the new section Raider came up with called Glider Aim Duel. The way it works is you either select the big switch on the left or one of the six different glider scenarios on the right wall. Once you select one of these switches, you and the person you're aim dueling will instantly be teleported into that respective aim map. When you start it, the person who flipped the switch gets to keep their weapons and is put on a platform, while the other person is launch padded into the air and forced to glide down. Your only goal as a gliding player is to make it to the blue safe zone at the end of the arena. On the other hand, your goal as
as the player with the weapon is to try to do as much damage to them as you can. Once you run through all the scenarios, you guys get to switch sides and do the other person's job. I'm telling you right now, this is the best and most realistic tracking practice you can get. Unlike the various other aim training maps I've recommended in the past, this glider aim duel drill uses real players as the target. It doesn't use zombies or bots, it uses another person, aka an actual in-game hitbox, that is trying to do their best to avoid you. Another reason these glider aim duels are so good is that they all help you practice different aspects of your tracking aim. One of the various six scenarios has your opponent gliding straight at you from the front, another has them gliding away from you from the back, one even has your opponent slowly gliding down from top to bottom, descending across numerous levels as you automatically follow them. Regardless of whichever one you choose, you're going to be getting some amazing tracking practice. Oh, and before I forget, there's actually a pretty big difference between hitting the main switch versus hitting one of the smaller switches. The big one makes you rotate through all six scenarios, while the smaller one will throw you into the drill you selected a total of two times. Both are perfectly good ways to aim train. The last and final reason I love these gliding drills is that they are insanely fun. I guess it's because you're competing against someone else, and half the time you're just gliding down trying not to get shot. Whatever it is, I really don't know, I just can't remember the last time I had that much fun while practicing my tracking aim. Oh, come on! Give it a me! Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no! But Jarian, what if I want to work on my click timing? I'm glad you asked that, little Timmy. That's exactly what the other half of the aim duel map is for. You guys remember how in the beginning I said there's 10 or so different classic, non-gliding aim duel scenarios? Those drills are there to practice your click timing and your tracking aim. In total, there are 9 drills starting from your normal 1x1 one one, all the way up to a 1x3 with cones. Your goal, just like with the glider scenarios, is to kill your opponent before they kill you. There's no building, no editing, nothing except a pure high HP aim duel. Now, there's a few reasons I suggest using classic aim duels over normal in-game aim trainers. First is that it's honestly the only way to improve your shotgun and click timing aim. As much as I love creative maps like Skavix or the Aim Center, they do not do a good job of improving your click timing aim. And to be honest, that's not really their fault. It comes down to the fact that the only good in-game shotgun practice you can get is with another player in the lobby, hence why aim duels is so dang good. Second reason these classic aim duels are awesome is that it actually helps improve your movement. Whenever you're practicing aim duels with your friends, you do not want to only focus on your aim. Trust me, I know how dumb that sounds, just hear me out for a second. The worst thing you can do while aim dueling is stand still. Sure, it may help you hit more shots, but it's not realistic practice. You need to be playing out these aim duels like you would an actual 50-50 fight in game. That means jumping up and down, crouch spamming, and strafing side to side. You're hitting two birds with one stone by improving both your click timing aim and your movement in one simple and fun drill. Pretty dang awesome. Third and final reason aim duels are so great is that Raider made them extremely realistic in his newest update. Take for example the high ground and low ground drill. This is quite literally the most realistic aim practice ever. Like, how many times in game are you going to get a clean shot off on a guy standing next to you? Not that often. Most of the time you'll be on a cone or on a ramp or a level below or above your opponent. Raider simulated those exact scenarios with his classic aim duel section. So if you're tired of the same old aim training maps that do not get you your desired results, load up this new aim duel map ASAP. It is currently the most efficient aim training you can get for tracking and click timing, all while being really, really fun. To wrap up the video, I want to talk about sensitivity. In the past, I've said you should not change your sense at all. This is not terrible advice, however, it is not that good advice. Straight from Carry You and Sparky Discord, muscle memory and aiming is not real. Most good aimers can change their sense without any significant problems as long as it's not in the extremes. What this means is that it's okay to be like Booga and change your sensitivity when it does not feel right. What it also means is that you should not be afraid to refine your optimal sense, which I'm going to do right now. In my opinion, the most accurate way to find your optimal sensitivity is through the PSA method. This method takes into account your mouse space, basically everything that's important. Here's how the PSA method works. Start by taking your mouse and placing it on one end of your mouse pad. After that, move it all the way to the other side of it. If that motion did more or less than a 360 degree turn in game, then you're gonna need to recalculate your base sensitivity. My base sensitivity is 8.5 X and Y sense because, again, that's the sense that allows me to do a perfect 360 while moving my mouse from 
from one side of my mouse pad to the other. Following that up, I'm gonna take my base sensitivity, play around with it in creative, and then depending on whether or not I like it, increase or decrease my sense by one percentage point. I personally thought 8.5 was way too slow, so I bumped it up to 9.5. From there, I repeated the process, tried it out, see if I liked it, and adjusted it again by 1%. I did this for a total of around 15 minutes, and as I got closer to what I like, I started adjusting it by 0.5% or 0.1%. I ended up with the sense I'm on now, 13% X and Y, and 400 DPI. So, if you guys want to know how to find your optimal sensitivity, especially for your setup, use the PSA method. Overall guys, that is my guide on how to improve your aim in Chapter 2 Season 4. For a quick recap, follow my tips to hit more tracking and click timing shots, aim train in Raider 464's new aim dual map version 2, and find your perfect sensitivity using the PSA method. As long as you actually apply what I told you here today, I promise you all, your Fortnite aim will undoubtedly improve. So if you guys enjoyed the video or you learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on my post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. Let me know if you guys use my code for the superhero skin because I saw a decent amount of new people did. On top of that, send me your combination since I'm not creative enough to think of any on my own. Feels bad, man. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.